In this video, you're going to learn how you can use DocuSign agreement rules to automatically save signed documents inside of your cloud storage folders, such as Google Drive, OneDrive, or SharePoint, even exporting the data your signers enter in the form field while they're signing your documents into a spreadsheet and much more. So first, I will show you what you can do with agreement rules, then I'll show you how they work, and then we're going to look at how to set those up step by step. Let's get into it. First, let's start with what you can do with agreement rules. The most popular thing is to store the signed PDF into a cloud storage folder. So once a DocuSign envelope is completed, that PDF will be extracted and uploaded to a Google Drive, OneDrive, SharePoint folder. So you can actually see the list of all the apps supported. So Box, Google Drive, OneDrive, SharePoint, Dropbox. And we can also rename the PDF using the naming convention of your choice. And there is to some extent the possibility of included variables in the naming convention so that you can easily rename a document with the name of the person who signed the document and include that in the, the PDF name to easily find it in the future. The second thing that's very popular is to extract the information your recipients have entered in the form field while completing your envelopes into a spreadsheet. Now, the two other actions that are a little bit less popular. So I'm going to demo today the store signed PDF and extract form data, but you can also trigger the sending of another envelope using a template once the first envelope has been completed. A good example of that would be a candidate accepting your offer letter. Then you can trigger the sending of another template which contains all of the onboarding documents, such as the company policy, the I-9, tax forms that you want to send only once a first document has been completed. And then finally, and that's out of scope for this video, you can start a CLM workflow, but that would require that you have a CLM, a DocuSign CLM subscription. Now let's talk about how rules work. It's pretty simple. You first need to have a DocuSign subscription that allows to set up rules. So all DocuSign IAM plans include this as well as DocuSign Business Pro subscriptions and above. So if you're on a DocuSign standard or personal, you're not gonna get access to rules. To set them up, it's pretty simple. You first need to set a condition. So the condition determines what needs to have happened for the rule to run, to be triggered. And the second component, all the actions. You can combine up to 10 conditions when setting up your rule. So you can say that if the recipient's email ends by at google.com, plus the sender was this person, plus the template was this. We'll get into it a little bit later when we get to the tutorial part. And then the actions are simply the steps that will occur once all of the conditions are met. So these are the things that you would typically do manually and DocuSign can do that for you. You can add up to three actions per DocuSign rule, and there is no limit to the number of rules that you can set up inside of your DocuSign accounts. So that's basically the gist of it. This is how agreement works. Now, why don't we take a look at how to set them up inside of your DocuSign accounts? And if we haven't met before, my name is Sofian Saudi. I used to be a DocuSign consultant back in the days, you know, the before COVID kind of thing in 2019. And since 2020, I've built Solusan Consulting, which is an agency dedicated to helping businesses who are drowning in paperwork using DocuSign or want to use DocuSign to automate their workflows. If your organization deals with lots of paperwork, you're wasting hundreds of hours every year across all team members. And there's a huge opportunity for you to automate and retrieve all that time back if you set up your document workflows automatically. For example, you can automate things like creating documents in one click using the data that is stored inside of your CRM or your spreadsheets or your HR software. You can also automatically track the signature status of all your documents without having to go back and forth inside of the DocuSign platform and rely on the DocuSign email notifications to follow your transactions. That's very useful. You can also obviously automate the storing of the signed documents in the folders of your choice. And you can also extract, as we were saying, the form data back to the system, back to the apps that you use every day. So for example, here, 
the agreement rules will only export to a spreadsheet, but you might want to have the data that your signers have entered in the form field synchronized and back inside of any of the apps that you use every day. And you can automate much more. And the thing is that you can do that by yourself, but you will need to first learn how to map out your workflow, learn how DocuSign works, build your doc templates, and then integrate those DocuSign templates in all the apps that you use every day. And that's something that you can absolutely do yourself by watching those tutorials and with trial and error. But if you don't have the time or willingness to become a DocuSign expert, then you can schedule a call using the link just down below. During that, we will review your process and propose an implementation roadmap based on your company's unique needs. But if you're more of a DIY person, that's totally fine. I suggest that you download the DocuSign Mastery Cheat Sheet. It will help you get started with DocuSign and automating your workflow on the right foot. Now let's go back to the tutorial and setting up those agreement rules. And we're going to start by setting up a rule that will store the signed PDFs inside of Google Drive. So let's just say that this offer letter here needs to be stored in a specific folder once the candidate and the HR manager have both signed this employment offer agreement. So we're going to go to our admin page. So you need to be an admin in order for you to create the rule. Once you're in the admin page, you want to navigate to the connections tab, and then you want to click on connect a new app and choose the app that you want to use in your rule. So in this case, I want to use Google Drive. If I want to use Google Drive, I'm simply going to give a name to my connection. So I'm going to use Sofian's Google Drive as the name. This does not matter at all. It's just for you to identify that connection in the future in case you have multiple connections. Here I'm going to authenticate with my password and then that's it. DocuSign will just be authorized to communicate with my Google Drive. Once you've connected your app and that can be any of these apps, then you want to navigate to the rules tab under the agreement actions section, and then you want to create your rule. You want to give a meaningful name to your rule so you know exactly what happens. So in this example, when offer letter is signed, store signed PDF in Google Drive. The more descriptive you can be about this, the better it is because otherwise you're going to end up with lots of rules and you're going to have you're going to have to dig in to understand what the rule actually does. So, now we need to set our condition and you can decide whether all of the conditions need to be met to trigger the rule or if just any of those conditions can be met. And as I was saying, you can have up to 10 conditions in one rule. But here we're going to keep things pretty simple. We're just going to say when the template and choose the template name, which was offer letter demo October 10, 24. And then if you want to add another condition, you can click here and, you know, the, the sender is this specific user or this specific HR coordinator. Um, you can decide between the list of users here that you have inside of your DocuSign account then you want to trigger the rule. I'm going to keep things simple for now, and I'm just going to add one condition to trigger my rule. Then I'm going to add my actions. In this case, I want to archive my document to my Google Drive connection, to my Google Drive account. And then here I'm going to be able to choose where in Google Drive that document should go to. I'm going to say that I want to save it under the HR folder, and then I can also customize how the envelope is going to be stored. In this case, if I want to include the certificate of completion, I can do that. And if I want to combine all the documents into one single PDF, I can also do that. In this case, I only have one document, so I don't need to do that. Now, if I want to customize the file naming convention, I can click on customize, customize file and folder name. And here I can just insert static information as well as variable information. So for example, this would be the offer letter. And then if I want to add the name of the recipient who is going to sign this, I can do plus last recipient name. Now you have to be careful with that because that means that the last recipient name has to be the candidate if this is what you want to occur. However, in our template, the last recipient name is not the candidate, it's the HR manager. So I don't want that. 
So what I can do is to add the email subject of my DocuSign envelope and make sure that when I send the DocuSign of a letter using the template, I make sure to add the name of my candidate and this will automatically in import the candidate name in here. That's the best workaround that I've found. Obviously, this is very limited. This is just out of the box what DocuSign can help you with. If you need more complex automations, then you might want to use DocuSign Maestro, but Maestro is not available on Business Pro plans. It's only available on IAM and Enterprise plans, and I've done a full video on how to use Maestro. You can also use comp something completely different. We at SoluSign use very often make.com which is a platform that gives us much more flexibility than what DocuSign provides here i do think that it's a little bit silly that we cannot decide which recipient name we can include as a variable but what can you do that's the only thing that's available for us now i could also add another action if i wanted to i can add up to three actions so i could say well export data into a spreadsheet but in this example we're not collecting any data in this document we are just collecting signatures so that doesn't make sense for me to do any of that. I'm just gonna click on save. And now I'm going to use this template to check that my rule is actually working. Now, before I use my template, I wanna make a small change so that the employee's name appears in the email subject by default so that my email subject can be merged in the signed PDF once the document gets completed. So I can change this email subject here and call this offer letter and then maybe hyphen and then insert the employee's name. Now, the problem with this is that I already have the word offer letter in my rule. So I'm gonna go back to my rules and then update this rule, which is my design store PDF in Google Drive, edit the rule. And then in here, in my customize the name, I'm going to remove this completely so that the only thing present in my file name is going to be the email subject of the envelope, which is going to be automatically generated. Now let's use the template. So we're going to go back to our templates list. I hope all of this makes sense. And if you don't know how to create a template, I really encourage you watch the DocuSign templates before you try to set up a new rule. Otherwise it's going to be very confusing for you. Here I'm going to add Sofian employee as the name of the signer. And we're going to say this is Sofian plus employee. When you're testing, this is really helpful to do that. Otherwise, you don't know whose envelope really signing for. If you're using the same envelope for testing, there you go. Here, I don't need to touch anything because the employee will be merged automatically with Sofian employee. I'm going to click next. And here, I'm going to have to fill in my form fields. Obviously, this, you don't want to do it manually. You want to automate as much as you want. You want to use API for this um, and there is a video that I've done on how to automate document generation um, using the data that you have stored in a I don't know spreadsheet or CRM like Salesforce you see those are all the tedious tasks that we really don't want to have to do manually because there's always going to be some errors that will occur and that's quite time consuming. So these, these are the kind of things that we automate for our clients. And if you don't have access to this, it's because you don't have DocuSign document generation turned on in your account, which is not available in Business Pro, which means you cannot create mail merge documents. And I've created a video on how to create mail merge DocuSign documents, um, which is another video that you can watch next. Now my documents is generated. I should have my fields in the right place, which is the case. And I can just click on send. I'm gonna sign the document now, first acting as the employee. I agree, continue, sing, I sign here, finish. And I'm gonna click on continue and sign this as Sofian HR, finish. Now the rule should have, um, it should be running at this time, at this, at this point. If I now go back to my HR drive, I should find my document and here it is, off a letter, hyphen Sofian employee. So that's what's the name of the recipient. Now we're gonna take a look at how to set up the rule that's going to extract information your recipients populate in form fields like this form into a spreadsheet. Well, the very, very first thing is to make sure that all your form fields in your template have a naming convention. 
that is meaningful. So for example, here, street address, this field is called candidate street address, address line one, and this field here is called bank address line one. So you wanna make sure that all your field labels are meaningful, otherwise that's not gonna make any sense because your fields are going to turn into columns into your spreadsheet and each row will be one envelope. So once you've made sure that your template is correctly configured, and I'm going to set up to add a rule that exports candidate bank details into spreadsheet. And that my template should be this one, candidate bank info. Now you need to have your spreadsheet ready and you need to make sure that the spreadsheet resides in your my drive. The spreadsheet cannot be in a shared drive uh, folder and that's another limitation that I'm not a big fan of and that's why typically very often we have to use another integration platform than just a built-in DocuSign but for some people that might work but your spreadsheet needs to be in your my drive account okay in your my drive a folder you can't store it in a shared drive that's not going to work so if you go back to your DocuSign actions then the action will be to export the data to spreadsheet and then you can select your Sophie and Google Drive connection. And then you will see your candidate bank details spreadsheet. We're gonna click on save. And now we're going to test this rule. You wanna make sure that the rule is enabled and it does say that it's enabled. So let's just use our DocuSign template and trigger this rule, test this rule. We're gonna click on use and fill in the fields here. I'm not gonna worry about this is not really an offer letter. This is more bank details. It doesn't really matter. And then click on send. And then I'm going to sign this. So I'm now acting as the candidate. Bank name is Bank of America. I've just populated this uh, bank information with some dummy information. I'm gonna click on finish. There we go. And you can see now there's a new column called road data that was just created. And here we have all the information. So who was the sender? And then if I expand this, you can see that all of the fields are here. You don't want to rename the columns. You don't want to reload the columns. What you could do is just, for example, give a more meaningful name. So candidate address line one. And then here you would just reference the cell where you have your candidate address line one here. And then you just want to pull this down. So that's fine, but this just don't touch it. Otherwise you're going to get in trouble. That's not going to work anymore. This is how you can use DocuSign agreement rules to automate some easy parts of your workflow. But now that doesn't obviously give you full flexibility of what you need. If you want to achieve full automation, then um, you should try to aim to this step where creating, sending, tracking, signing, and storing all of the information is completely automated. If you want to discuss how this could work for your organization, you can schedule a consultation with me and my team using the link just down below. During the call, we will review your workflow and give you the best implementation roadmap for your unique needs. I will see you in the next video. And until then, happy signing. Ciao.